The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, said Storm Daniel is yet another lethal reminder of the catastrophic impact that's changing, that a change in climate can have on our world. He made this comment while speaking on the devastating floods in Libya. Tuck called on all Libyan political actors to overcome political deadlocks and divisions and to act collectively to ensure access to relief. He also added that he stands in solidarity with the people of Libya as he expressed his deepest condolences to those who were mourning. I am profoundly distressed that thousands of lives have been so brutally swept away in eastern Libya. And so many more people have lost their loved ones, their homes, their communities, and their access to basic needs. Storm Daniel is yet another lethal reminder of the catastrophic impact that the changing climate can have on our world. I call on all Libyan political actors to overcome deadlocks and divisions and to act collectively in ensuring access to relief. This is a time for unity of purpose. All those affected must receive support without regard for any affiliations. It is important that particular care is taken to ensure protection of groups in vulnerable situations who are rendered even more at risk in the aftermath of such a disaster. Human rights need to be at the center of the response to this heartbreaking situation. We need to invest in prevention and resilience. I stand in solidarity with the people of Libya with my deepest heartfelt condolences to those who are mourning irreplaceable losses. Climate justice activist from Tanzania, Ziade Kasimu, and environmentalist Desmond Majakodumi here in Nigeria joins me on the news to discuss how Africa has been grappling with climate change. Gentlemen, thank you for giving us your time. Let me start with you, Zaida. Earthquake in South Africa and Morocco in the past week, and we have flooding in Libya. Africa is seeing a reoccurring natural disasters. What do you think is responsible for these? Um, first of all, we should understand that these natural disasters and catastrophes that occur are occur due to natural resources and natural uh, environment. So it is essential for us to, uh, to, it is recommended for us to create the valuable, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it's recommended to build the resilience of these areas. And first it is recommended to all people who are responsible to conduct the early warning of these areas to be valuable, to be available at any time that disasters occur. Yeah. All right, this one, let me come to you. 16 states in Nigeria are on high alert for flooding due to heavy rains. How, what, what is your assessment of our emergency preparedness um, for such heavy rains? In the past, we've had complaints about inadequate preparation. Has there been any improvement or we still have a long way to go? Yes, there's, um, there's, there's been some improvement. There's some good people in the emergency services, but the support that they require is far too inadequate, as can be seen by what happened in Libya. This was, <laughs> this was a massive amount of rain, several months of rain falling in 48 hours, a classic example of what the commissioner from the United Nations was just saying, the catastrophic consequences of what we are doing. And whilst Nigeria may be fortunate to escape that type of flooding this particular year, the kind of flooding that we can expect will be even as much, if not more, as what Libya has experienced. Because this is the new normal that is coming about if we do not address this thing very seriously. It is a crisis. It is a crisis. And we're not looking at it as a crisis. So the uh, support agencies need to have far, far more support because sadly, there's going to be a lot more of this coming over the next few years. And if we don't stop the process that causes it, 
which is the global warming that is bringing about the climate change, it shall get very, very bad. And um, uh, eventually... Not. Before I go to uh, Zayda, I want to ask you specifically, are there areas in our emergency response um, that's con that is concerning for you and you wish to see expedited action uh, because the rains are here already? Yes, yes. The, the, the emergency response people, there, there's some really, really good people there. And our meteorological organization is pretty much uh, up to scratch. They give us good warnings and so on. We're having a reasonable relationship with the people who have the control over some of the dams that bring the flood water in. So in that regard, we're okay. But what we're not okay for is the amount of water that's going to be coming in the short term. Libya is a wake-up call. And let us not let those lives that were lost, that terrible, terrible tragedy, let it not be totally wasted. Let us hear the call that, hey, this is something we've got to be prepared for. Emergency services, they certainly need a lot more support. Those good right. people, there, they can't do it just by themselves. We need to support them because the floods are coming and we're not really prepared for the type of floods that will be coming because of the catastrophic consequences of what we're doing against nature. Nature right. always Zayda, hits back. Let's, let's bring in Zayda and get her perspective. I mean, we, we talked about uh, emergency response in Nigeria. I want you to speak on the situation in both Morocco and Libya at the moment. Um, as part say the response from the government and international organizations are slow, um, do you think maybe the situation could have been averted or at least reduced to the barest minimum if emergency team responded more quickly? Um, first, uh, the Africa, first we should, uh, we should collect uh, effective information. First, we should understand and uh, know what thing make them to be slow as an expertise. And also, these uh, global north countries they should understand that Afri as an African, we do we can't able we can't able to do this thing for ourselves. So we need the finance, and everyone knows that uh, this catastrophe is the part of loss and damage. So we need the finance so that we can we can I don't know to say, but we need this finance so that Africa can be able and can be manage themselves due to these uh, effects and impacts that you pass. So now it is a time to know that Africa, we need a loss and damage finance. Thing. All right, Desmond, we know that some of these earthquakes trigger other earthquakes and sometimes there is a reoccurrence. Uh, what's the guarantee that the coast is clear now, do you know? There is absolutely no guarantee. Unfortunately, some of these countries are on what they call fault lines. And also because of what we're doing with the various hydrological systems of the planet. In some areas, a lot more water is falling. In other areas, we're tapping tremendous amounts of uh, uh, sub-aquifer, you know, groundwater. We're bringing it up and it's drying and it's causing vacuums. So, you know, the reality is that we are not giving nature nearly enough regard and respect that she requires. We need, as human beings, to stop our arrogance and start living in harmony with nature, like all the other creatures, all the other biosystems. We can't just be fighting nature and doing things because it could possibly trigger off earthquakes in unexpected areas. And the ones that are happening could be happening far more vigorously, far more violently. What you give to nature, she is obliged to give you back. It's a fundamental law of physics and metaphysics. Whatsoever you do, <laughs> you get the reward, you reap it. So, yes, we need to be very, very careful and have a change in our attitudes. This is an unprecedented time that's coming for humanity. July, the hottest month ever recorded in human history. And the past uh, 10 years have uh, recorded, I think it's about five of the hottest years. This is not good. It's not a safe way to go. we got to right. turn around and put people first. All right, let, let's wrap things. up with uh, Zayda. I mean, Africa... We, we don't contribute a lot to the destruction of the climate, but we seem to be getting a lot more of the impact. What would be um, your thoughts, quickly, in 30 seconds, if you can, 
on Africa's efforts to help with the change of climate, to combat climate change, uh, really? Oh, yeah, but uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation is a complex thing and a challenge that needs long-term long -term action. So we all, uh, as an African and global country, we all need to sustainable sustainable goals, sustainable development. Everyone should be committed to ongoing and conduct and making that uh, sustainable goals as it needed so that we can control this, we can mitigate these changes and everyone could adapt to these changes. Yeah. All right, this one, your thoughts quickly. You know, and that's the wonderful silver lining on this terrible dark cloud, one of the darkest clouds that humanity has ever faced. The silver lining is that we're going to come together. Africa is already coming together after the Nairobi conference. Fantastic. Human beings, we have one common problem. And if we come together, we can solve the problem and make the world a better place. Thank you very much, Zaida Kasimu, um, climate justice activist, and Desmond Madia Kodumi, um, also an environmentalist here in Nigeria. We appreciate your input. Thank you.